bros and broettes, I'm gonna need your help in this video. So we did a video where we tested a variety of jigs when it came to the hover strolling or mid strolling technique. You've probably seen it a bunch on tournaments. MLF tournaments have been dominated by it. Um, at least half the top tens have come on it. Um, it's a forward facing style technique. It's not restricted to that. But one thing that I've noticed is I've had a huge amount of success with one of the jigs that we tested and that's this one right here. This is a little, it's a deep south Ned head jig and you're like bro that's a Ned head that's not a swim bait head that's not a hover strolling head that's where you're mistaken so what we found when we did the underwater tests is I was looking for a side to side action um, just kind of like a rocking style action and this one and the owner roller ball it's a new style jig head um, really provided that they had sort of a shimmy almost like a crankbait shimmy back and forth um, especially when you added just a little soft kind of like rod tip shake and kind of shaking that semi taut semi slack line um, what I want to do though is I've caught some absolute giants. So I started doing this a whole bunch in Alabama over the past like six to eight months. Um, caught them ledge fishing, caught them in fall, caught them in winter, suspended. And now I'm down in Florida and I'm catching some absolute trolls on it, dude. And, and we're fishing like two and a half, three inch baits, very small baits. So you need a very specific jig head setup in order to present like the Gambler FFS Minnow, the, you know, the Spunk Shad, um, all these kind of like downsize, the, the new Echo from cast all these downsized straight tail type baits they're kind of swim baits but they're sort of like mini jerk baits um but what what i really need your help on is this so i want to design a jig <laughs> and this this ned jig does the job mostly but i think there's some improvements that can be made to it to really tweak it to get the most like rocking action with the least amount of effort and that's what i'm going to talk to you about today so what i've been using to kind of rehash is basically the setup i'm running is this is a, a daiwa exceller the new one i have 12 pound cast braid i'm down in florida and i'm running 12 pound fluorocarbon because dude like we caught like one almost 13 we caught like a 1277 caught an 11 4 we caught multiple like nine almost 10 pounders like more than i can count on both hands we caught a lot of fish doing this um it's a seven foot lunker stick medium light it's a little lighter action rod um which i think is important and then the other thing that we're doing with this is we are tying a loop knot onto that that eighth ounce ned um, the trick is though, this Ned does not come in a 3 16 I don't think you need a quarter. I don't think you need three eighths. I think that the main sizes are an eighth and three 16 that you need. So that's one of the difficulties is we need it in that other size. The other thing that I'm finding is, so one of the benefits of this jig and what's actually causing it to, to do this side to side action is the flat head. So it has a flat head with kind of like a teardrop bottom to it. Um, and I think what happens is that water hits against the flat head and it almost acts as a scrounger, causing that jig to rock back and forth because you have that water pressure against there, but it comes to sort of a, a teardrop tip right there and then it causes the jig to sort of wobble. The other cool thing with the flat head that I think it's doing is it's actually slowing the bait down. I thought it would cause a bunch of rise. It does cause the bait to rise a little bit, but not nearly as much as I thought. So what it's actually doing is that water pressure is sort of stalling the bait, but it's it's actually slowing that bait down which was one of the keys to this presentation you're basically trying to move the bait without moving the bait a lot like bed fishing you know when you're shaking slack line um, but what I want to do and and this is where I want to get your feedback so it has a decent keeper on it it's got a little wire kind of I don't know like a V hook keeper on it one thing that I think would improve this is a smaller version screw lock keeper to really keep that bait just just stuck on there you know i like throwing that ball head that scottsboro and that descent jig um i really like that because it, it really keeps that bait straight it keeps it locked in and when you have fish i've had a lot of fish kind of hit this and miss it and pull on it it'll as jt says pull your pants down and slide your bait down I don't want to have that problem because the most important thing when that happens is being able to make that second cast that that next cast very quickly and not lose track of that fish on forward facing so i think that's one of the improvements this is the one where i'm going to need your feedback though so what i'm thinking is with this jig head if i were to cut a small channel basically a small kind of like rounded cylinder in the bottom 
all I'm trying to do is I, I was kind of thinking about scrounger heads and scrounger heads have that cupped bill facing upwards, right? Basically, I want to create that cupped bill facing downwards, but using lead instead of plastic. Um, if you guys are familiar with Jackal, um, Jackal makes, I forget what it's called. It's like the shimmy shad or something like that. It's, it's a JDM Japanese style bait. It's actually a soft plastic stick style bait. Um, Jesse, Jesse Wiggins uses it a whole bunch. I think he actually scored God, I think he did really good on Gunnersville on it, and then he did really good in the first, was it Toledo Bend or Sam Rayburn, one of the first BPT tours. Um, he was using it to do this hover strolling technique, and basically that soft plastic lure has a bill on the soft plastic that goes down. And what I want to do is sort of recreate that on this jig head by creating a small channel um, right in that that sort of like that diamond teardrop tip and what I'm thinking that's going to do is it's going to sort of increase the water catch on the front of that jig and actually maybe that's a question too should the channel be created in a manner so it's pointed down or, or it opens up going up um, I don't know if the, the downward is going to create less rising motion or if the upward channel almost exactly like a scrounger is going to create less rise version. The only problem is you have to look out for the, the line tie right there. Um, I don't know how much you can push back towards that line tie. Um, but the goal is to get that scrounger style action with less rod shaking. Basically, I want to achieve that, that side to side kind of rocking action just by kind of slow reeling it, um, as they call tight lining it, you know, what we've been doing and you've watched me do it a whole bunch with Kitex over the past few years. I love doing that. I think that's why I like this technique so much is it's really almost the exact same thing as, as Kitex fishing and in the past, like, God, five years, I can't tell you how many giants I've caught on Kitex, both down here in Florida, as well as up in Alabama, spots, largemouth. There's just something about that small swim bait presentation. Um, and this is sort of a slowed down version of that Kitex fishing, that small kind of swim bait, small plastic um, fishing on, on lighter stuff to keep it above the bottom suspended and keep it above those fish and let them come to it. But basically what I'm looking for is give me some feedback. A lot of you guys make your own jigs and make your own baits and, and you guys fish. You know what you're doing, you know what you're talking about, and you know how to fish. So what I'm looking for is do you think I should create that channel in the jig going downwards or upwards? And are there any other tweaks to the jig that you'd recommend to get that wobbling action? I think there's a fine line between um, over modifying the jig and then we lose some of that that flat head I think it's very important to keep that, that teardrop styled head on this jig I think that's the first thing that gives it that rocking motion as well as that stalled motion um, I like the hook on here this is I think it's probably like a two aught um, it, just a medium wire maybe standard wire just a little bit less the trick with it is it fits so the baits I've really been kind of using on this thing are uh, a hog farmer spunk shed, um, just like this one. It's the little, th what is it, a three and a half inch version. So the spunk shad, you know, little straight tail kind of thing. And then the other bait is a little bit smaller than that, but it's the, the Gambler um, FFS Minnow, the one that, that shows up better on um, forward facing. So they're, they're thinner, the, the spunk shad's a little wider, but the Gambler's a little bit thinner, um, very minnow oriented style baits. So I don't want to over hook it, even though we're catching bigs. I need a semi stout hook to catch bigs. I've actually caught on this specific hook. Um, I caught an 11 four, um, and like I said, multiple nine pounders. So I'm not super worried about that. But basically, I'm wondering if that that added keeper that screw lock keeper, and then placing that channel um, is really going to achieve my goal of creating a little bit more rocking action, um, but not kind of killing that stalling action. Because I think one of the things with this strolling technique that, you, that you're going to find, there's a million baits out there for it. You know, Jacob Wheeler's got his his signature series from Rapala, that, that New Jack City or whatever it's called. Um, you know, it's kind of like a, a play off the spunk shad there's a bunch of different minnow style baits out there on um, these straight tail kind of like downsized flukes and a lot of those can sort of create action much like the jackal but i think when it comes down to it the real like 
I don't know, next frontier, if you will, with this stuff is really modifying these jig heads um, to create different actions, different wobbles and different falls um, to achieve sort of just different presentations um, in the water column with a lot less effort when it comes to actually imparting action. Because one of the things that I have found that's sort of driving this is these fish are beginning to get pressured by this technique they're seeing it so they're they're becoming slightly less responsive they're still pretty good about it like you can catch a ton you can catch bigs and you can catch numbers um, but what i'm finding is especially in this early portion of the season when the water's a little bit cooler these fish are kind of pre-spawn but they can be finicky with cold fronts is the more action the more you shake your rod and impart action sort of in a human way um a lot of times i'm finding when i see them on the forward facing that that actually shuts them off and puts them in a negative mood the the real key to a lot of my early season sort of hover strolling when we get to to like summer with ledge fish dude i will just shake that thing like you know shake it like a salt shaker kind of deal you know what i'm saying little throwback there um it, that works because i did that all last year um, before the actual gambler hover hook came out i actually had it like super early dude back in like last january um so when we got to may like i was shaking it catching a whole bunch of fish but during that early season period what i really found is the reeling action and not imparting too many shakes on it was was really key so i want to try to find and create a jig head that that you don't need to work as hard especially for these early season fish that that actually just kind of because of its physical makeup because of its physics it actually creates that action without you having to to work it so hard so that's kind of it that's um that's my goal here any feedback that you guys have any insights um for the jig makers from guys fishing this technique i think though this is something that that's really going to make a difference as we move forward if you're really trying to be detail oriented and tweak the the things that you're doing when it comes to this forward facing deal and presenting just a very natural style bait a lot of it's going to relate to the jig head um so it's really going to matter what that jig head does to the action of the variety of minnow baits out there that, that you can put Put on the back of it and do your little salt shaker thing with hope you guys enjoyed this video like i said drop your insights drop your design kind of concepts and thoughts down in the comments box i'll be very curious to read them hit that like and subscribe button for me we'll see you back out on the water and hopefully if this whole thing comes together at one point with a prototype jig that we can uh, implement and try out and uh catch some great big giant bass on